Good morning. I'm the Reverend Ronald Nathan, and I'm the pastor of the Hogard Amy Zion Church, which is located in Jackson, in the parish of St. Michael on the island of Barbados. Welcome to our meditation, a psalm a day. And today's meditation is taken from Psalms 137, and my subject is By the Rivers of Babylon by the rivers of Babylon. Psalm 137 has been made well known because it has been in the pop charts um, over the years and has been popularized in song. Well, that wasn't the first time. This psalm was written to be sung by the Jews as they made their way into Jerusalem after they had returned to what uh, they call the promised land. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors ask us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. The experience of being an exiled people, snatched from all that is familiar, one's lands, people's language, culture, is indeed a traumatic experience. So it is with this psalm, which was written during the 70-year period of exile, in Babylon. The Jewish diaspora, that is Jews who were scattered across Babylon, some 2,537 kilometers away from Jerusalem, testifies to the fact that Judah was defeated in battle by the Babylonians. The land was then destroyed the city of Jerusalem was destroyed in 586-87 BC. The majority of its population killed or enslaved. Jerusalem was burned to the ground and its protective walls broken down. Records tells us that the Babylonians then decided to deport some 10,000 Jews and a thousand soldiers from Jerusalem to Babylon, including the then existing king Jehoiachin. So the Jews found themselves for about two generations living in Babylonian cities by the rivers of Babylon, the Euphrates, the Tigris, the Cheba, the Habor. And these rivers dominated uh, the land scene in, ba in Babylon. There were major cities built on their banks. But this psalm introduced us to what I call the communal depression of the Jewish people who were exiled in Babylon. Verse 4 of the chapter says, Where we wept when we remember Zion. They really had six reasons to cry. Judah was no more. Jerusalem was no more. The temple where Yahweh was worshipped was no more. The king, the descendant of David, was no more on the throne. The remnant of Judah was scattered across Babylon. The army of Judah was no more. And if you wish, a seventh uh, Jerusalem itself was just laid waste. They were losing their identity in Babylon as well. And this was a major challenge for those purists who wanted to re reserve and preserve the identity of Babylon. We know from the book of Daniel and the book of Esther, for example, that 
uh, many of the Babylonians, uh, sorry, many of the Jews were given Babylonian names. So that would expose them uh, even to Babylonian language, education, and culture. Daniel, which is a Jewish name, became Belshazzar. Hananiah became Shadrach. Mishael became Meshach. And Azariah became Abednego. But what has all of this got to do with this psalm? Well, what is even more tragic in the experience of the Jews in Babylon is that not only was their nation defeated and plundered and their beloved city destroyed and temple crushed to dust, their artifacts and wealth stolen and placed in the museums of their oppressors, their reputation as singers and musicians remained intact. And their oppressors, their tormentors, called upon them to sing the songs of Zion, those songs of joy in Babylon. The Jews understood this as a mockery of their religion and their plight. Let us remember that at the time of David, there were some 4,000 of the 36,000 Levites who were chosen by David for temple service were musicians. So there were 4,000 musicians during the time of David. And so uh, we could assume at least there were some uh, thousands of those remaining at the time of King Jehoiakim. So the call to sing Zion songs in Babylon was seen as a mockery of their God, their religion, their history, their culture, and their traditions. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And they ask, how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? So they protested. They hung up their harps in the poplar trees so they would not have to sing. Extra biblical historical records tell us that King Nebuchadnezzar killed thousands of Jews because of this protest. So this psalm is a psalm of lamentation as the people would cry out to God to help them during this torment. They went on to pledge civil disobedience by hanging up their harps and refusing to play for they were being tormented. What does this have to say to us today? Well, one, we need to understand that in the history of humankind, many nations and civilizations have been enslaved and scattered abroad in other countries. They have to find a way to come to terms with their history and to begin to exploit the very experience that they are having that is a negative experience, begin to exploit this in a positive way. Because no land is really strange to God. And in our service of God, we will have to serve him, whether here in the Caribbean as people of African descent or on the continent of Africa itself. May God bless you. Have a rich day.